Praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Sessom, Pastor Clifford Sessom. I am the pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. We're located in the city of Riverside in Southern California. Our address is 16681 Wood Road. Amen. We've been studying, amen, the topic, the topic of study, <laughs> I'll say that much, has been no more limits. Let me turn this music down a little bit. Maybe that'll help me. There we go. No more limits. Amen. And what we endeavor to do is totally immerse ourselves in the fact that God desires for us to increase our capacity, thereby taking the limits off of what we are capable or what we re what we actually receive, amen, or what manifests in our life, praise the Lord. And so uh, we would uh, have you to turn tonight to the book of James, James chapter one, amen, glory to God. And I wanna remind those or, or mention to, to those who are just turning on, I just see some more people come on, this is our means of doing our, of conducting our weekly Bible study for our church, amen. During the pandemic, we found that we get more of our people that, uh, to actually participate this way. And so, I know it may seem different, but sometimes God does different things, amen, and it is working for us. And we also want to uh, encourage those of you, amen, to exercise prudence while you're uh, out and about amen it is extremely hot here in the inland empire in southern california we want you to be safe we want you to watch out amen i'm just rambling on amen we're in james chapter one glory to god and while you're turning there i'm gonna go ahead and pray Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. God, we say that this is the day you made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we ask your, your grace, your mercy, your anointing upon us to teach tonight. We're teaching on no more limits. That's our topic of study. Father, we endeavor to immerse ourselves in this teaching, even as you have shown us to do so. We thank you for your blessing, your grace to do that. We thank you, Lord God, and we acknowledge you in giving us the privilege and the honor of teaching this word. I pray for those who are viewing via Facebook Live and those who will view via YouTube. We give you praise for them, Father. We thank you that they have faith to believe, to receive, to apply the word to their lives, God. God, let me teach tonight with clarity Oh God, and with accuracy in the name of Jesus. Now, Satan, you are a liar. We come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. We have victory over you. You are under our feet. We come against every foe to faith in the name of Jesus. And we thank our God, our Father, in Jesus' name for good success in this endeavor. And those that agree, say amen. Praise the Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, welcome to another round of Bible study, our Tuesday night Bible study. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to go into uh, part two of uh, the topic of total immersion. Amen. Uh, and we're going to, amen, uh, camp out on the idea that you must become single-minded on the word. You must become single-minded on the word. And remember, our goal is to increase our capacity to receive from God. We, we are endeavoring to remove the limitations and enlarge our faith. A amen, somebody. That's what we endeavor to do. Praise the Lord, oh God. And, and so in order to do this, amen, glory to God, we've got to become singly minded on the word of God. Hallelujah. 
And of course, we are applying the biblical principle of total immersion. Amen. Glory to God. And this is our second week talking about uh, total immersion. We, we mentioned it last week, and uh, <clears throat> I believe we're going to go a little further in it next week. Amen. So once again, if you have your Bibles with you, amen, let's look at and see what the book of James says. James chapter 1. Uh, we'll start reading from verse 5. I'm going to be reading uh, from the King James version of the Holy Bible. It says, if any of you, if any of you, if any of you, amen, that means anybody, doesn't make a difference, amen, <laughs> uh, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not. What does it mean to abrade? Hmm? It, it means to ridicule. It means to scold or insult you uh, using uh, words, uh, angry words at you. So it says God won't do that if you ask for it. Amen. He will not upbraid you. And it says, and it shall be given him. Amen. If you need wisdom, you can ask God for it. Uh, we need to really understand what's wisdom. W wisdom is, is uh, the ability to apply given knowledge at the right time, the right place, or in the right situation. I'll say that. That's what wisdom is. All right? In a nutshell. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. What Number one, what is a double-minded man? What does the word mean by that? Huh? A double-minded man is a person who is drawn in two opposite directions. It's almost like playing tug of war in your mind. Hmm? Uh, it, 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 it speaks to an individual who has a divided allegiance. Amen. Uh, and because of his allegiance is divided, that really, impl the implication is that there is a lack of sincerity mm -hmm, uh, in, uh, in uh, what, what a person believes or is supposed to be having faith in. A lack of sincerity is not, not uh, uh, sold out. It, huh? it has not totally, uh, he's not all in. Amen. Or she's not all in. Amen. Glory to God. It, meant, it speaks to a person that vacillates between belief and disbelief, amen, and sometimes thinking that God will help him and other times giving up all hope in God helping, huh? The, the, the Bible says uh, that such a person is unstable in all his ways, not only in their prayer life, amen. It's saying this lack of consistency in, in his exercise of faith uh, really speaks to what to their to their character, amen. This individual is unstable, amen. And so we have to endeavor, amen, to be single-minded when it comes to the Word of God, amen. A couple uh, months ago, I I told you I said I used the term I said we respond to what we believe, amen. We respond to what we believe. Amen. If you believe this to be the word of God, you should be responding to it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, so we need to understand when we ask God for wisdom, God is not going to rebuke us. He's not going to be condescending to us. He's not going to grudgingly say, oh, no, here, here they come. No. Uh, you know he's going to he's going to give it to us, Amen. He he, he uh, liberally he's going to pour it out on your life, Amen. Praise the Lord. So a person who stays single-minded on the word will in fact enlarge his capacity to receive from the Lord. We have to be single. 
minded. Amen. We have to be single minded. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus name. Um, now, I, I know in our church services uh, for the past uh, two Sundays, I've been using uh, Caleb as our example. And we want to, amen, go back to that uh, this evening. Amen. So let's go back to Joshua, to Joshua chapter 14. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. We give you praise tonight, Father. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Joshua chapter 14. Amen. We're going to talk about Caleb again. Praise God. While it's fresh in your mind. And that'll be part of our uh, total immersion. Amen. Principle being practiced, being applied. Amen. Uh, Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. Now we're going to walk through uh, a few verses, uh, a sets of verses in Joshua tonight. Watch this. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Look what, what uh, Caleb says. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. Amen. I wholly followed the Lord my God. In other words, Caleb said he was is telling us that he became or he was single minded as it appertained to the word that they had received from God. A amen, somebody. God told them to go and spy out the land. Mm -hmm. You know, it was in numbers. Go spy out the land. Go come back with evidence of what the land is, that the land is a good land. Come on. Let me, let me put a bookmark right here, and we'll just jump right into that. Amen. While we're talking. Yes. Mm-hmm. Number, Numbers chapter 13 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, and all those men were heads of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 17 of Numbers 13, it says, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, mm -hmm. what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or, men, or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage. Come on, somebody. And bring of the fruit of the land. Amen. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we know that they were they were they received word they were that they were supposed to go in. Amen. And get in, in, and go see the, and do a reconnaissance on this on the land of, of Canaan. Amen. But the the tw it was twelve of them, and two of them came back saying or uh, staying single minded. That was Joshua and Caleb, and the other ten uh, made the people. Get in fear and in doubt and unbelief. Amen. It says uh, in verse uh, what, where, what verse I want? In verse twenty-five of Numbers thirteen, it says, "And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. Now they've been on this land for forty days, and they made it back. None of them died. None of them got killed. They made it back. 
Verse 26, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness Paran, of the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Number one, they should have just been talking to Moses and Aaron, you know, and then and then let Aaron and Moses talk to the people. Huh? But they went out there and got everybody all stirred up in fear. Mm -hmm. 27. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, they said for sure. And this is the, they brought back evidence. They came back with a testimony. Amen. Of the evidence. Amen. But then they messed up the testimony. Look what they said in verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. So they were able to go throughout this land. They knew where every, all the, the inhabitants lived at, where they dwelled at. They, they, they noticed the terrain because they mentioned mountains. They mentioned the sea coast. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, and, 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 and on the, in the coast. And, 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 but they, but they, uh, they, but they shouldn't have mentioned the fact that the folk was very great and all this. In other words, they implicate the implication. Well, we can't do this. And then Caleb verse 30 says, and Caleb stilled the people. In other words, Caleb said, y'all need to shut that mess up. Y'all need to stop talking like that. You know, it says, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Now, it's important when you receive a word from God, not to tarry, not to wait. As the, the more longer you wait, the enemy of your soul, he tries to, in, in, I'm, I'm going to tell you, he'll try to show you every bad thing that could possibly happen. Come on. He'll try to show you every possible way it won't work. So you need to move quickly in doing what God said do. He said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. Hmm? And so, and then it says, but the people that went up with them said, we can't do it. They said, we be not able to go up against the people for they're stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched into the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are of men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight. You know, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. No one, they couldn't tell what them folk was, was thinking. And I don't think that people even seen them. You know what I'm saying? Because they did. They would have, they tried to kill them. Amen. But the Bible it teaches us that Caleb wholly followed the Lord. He, he, him and Joshua, they stuck with the word of God. Amen. Glory to Jesus' name. They believed God. Come on, somebody. They believed God. Hallelujah. That's important. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to Joshua chapter 14. Let's go back there. Hallelujah. All right. So Caleb said, I wholly followed the Lord, but it was them other, my brothers, in other words, the other 10 leaders of those tribes, they're the ones that made the people, the, that, that made the heart of the people to melt. Mm -hmm. They made the people to lose courage. They're the ones who caused the people's uh, courage to fail mm -hmm, by their negative report. Let's look at verse 10, Joshua chapter 14, verse 10. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these 40 and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered, wandered, went around in circles, wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day four score a score is 20. So we're saying four times 20 is 80. He's saying four score and five years old. In other words, he's saying, I'm 85 years old now. Look at verse 11. And this is, I mentioned this on Sunday. As yet, 
I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. See, God had promised that he was going to be the one that got that his inheritance. And here and he and he held on to God's word. Amen. He stayed. Caleb stayed singly minded on the word of God all through the wilderness experience. Forty years and five more years. He was eighty five years old. Come on. When he said, give me this mountain. Amen. He he stayed. He 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 stuck stuck to the fact. Stayed on the word. Hung on to the word that God had promised him that he was going to go in and receive his inheritance. Him and Joshua. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. And I believe the the the, the mere fact of him hanging on, staying singly minded, focused. You know. Listen. In biblical days. And when individuals were given a name, the name stood for something. The name had meant something. There was some significance to the name given. Uh, when you look at the name Caleb, his name is like saying a dog, a dog. But I want you to understand this. It's not talking about a dog in a negative connotation. It's saying a dog like a pit bull that gets a hold to something and holds on and holds on and never lessens or loosens his grip. Come on, come on, come on. Never loosens that bite. In other words, Caleb tasted the word of God and he held on with pit bull like a vice. Amen. He held on to the promise of God to him. Come on. That's I, I, I got to deal with this. See, many of us, let me put this down. Many of us, we are too, uh, we, we don't have the patience and we need to develop that pace. We need the patience that's in us to be developed so that we can hang on to what God promises for more than a day, for more than a week. Come on. Sometimes God give you a promise. It may not materialize for years, but you have got to remember what God has said. You've got to believe what God said. You've got to hold on to what God said. Some of the tools I use to hold on to what God said is I bring to my mind uh, times or situations that he brought me through. No, the promise that he has given me has not yet manifested, but yet he's yet doing other great things for me. Come on. And, and, and what I do, I recall to my mind. Those things, those times, those situations, those, I, I even, I, I rehearse them in my mind. Come on. I'll share the testimony with someone else. And when I'm sharing the testimony with someone else, it seems like somehow there's a boomerang effect and it comes back to me and it encourages me to hold on with pit bull faith. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Caleb stayed singly minded. That's one way you can do it. When it, when the going looks like when the things try to look bleak, when the enemy tries to cast a shadow over your life or over your faith, amen, recall something that God has done for you. Recall that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, there's a portion of scripture. I think I'm going to try to find it real quick. Let me see if I can find this. Thank you, Jesus. If I can't find it, I'll just let it go. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah. Lamentations 321. God, you're so good. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. Go to Lamentations 321. Lamentations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to Jesus' name. 
actually go to Lamentations 319. That's a place to start. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. It makes sense. I'm telling you, you need to invest in your <laughs> your growth, in your own, amen, glory to God, your own uh, biblical, your own spiritual education, or growth and maturity. I used the, my uh, concordance in the back of my Bible to recall what scripture it was. Lamentations 319 reads this way. Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's remembering his bitterness. He's remembering, bringing to his mind that, remember I said, when the enemy tried to cast that grayness, that gray, that shadow over your faith, over your life. He says, remembering that. He said, verse 20, it says, my soul has hath them still in remembrance and is humbled or bowed down in me. The enemy is causing me to bow down. Come on, somebody. The enemy, come on, somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm going, going through some stuff. Amen. But verse 21 says this. This I recall to my mind. Come on. This I recall to my mind. Come on. So you've got some work to do. Come on. And stay. In, I feel him. Hey, no more shot this is what you have to do. There's work you have to do. And as a soldier, come on, as a soldier, amen. This I have to do. This you have to do. This I recall to my mind. Look what he says. Therefore have I hope. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Therefore have I hope. Amen. Look what he says in verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. I'm still here. I'm still standing. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, come on. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Come on. I'm still in. I'm still in the fight. Come on. I'm still in the battle. Come on, somebody. I'm still fighting a good fight. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm still, yes, I am. I'm still holding on. I'm, I've bit on the word. I've tasted and seen that it's good. I'm holding on to it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look what it says. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Verse 24, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Come on, somebody. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my portion. Hallelujah. Robo shanda baba kata. Uh, Jeremiah is saying, glory to God, if I lose everything, I still got God. He's saying, he's saying his strength come, is, is placing his hope, his trust in God. He Yes, Jeremiah find, found himself in some desperate situations, some desperate situations. Come on, circumstances, but he maintained singleness of mind. Yeah, you, listen, 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 let me tell you something about Jeremiah. We, we, Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet because he, he had, Jeremiah really, I, he, well, I got to say this. It seemed like Jeremiah had some bouts with depression. Like the enemy was trying to depress him. You know, the, Jeremiah would go out and preach something, amen, and, 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 and all kind of, uh, ruckus would get stirred up and he would say, I, you know, I'm not preaching no more. But y'all know what the Bible said? It said he tried to hold his peace, but the word of God in him was like fire shut up in his bones. He had to release that word anyway. Come on, somebody. He had to release it anyway. And it's because of that he would have these, these, you know, he, there was, it looked like there was an instability. But what he did is telling us right here in his confession of faith, when going through that, yeah, he said he remembered the bad times. But what he would do is to get out of that. Come on, sometimes you get, you might get down, but you got to dig yourself out. He said, I recall to my mind. Come on, this I recall to my mind. Uh-huh, uh it is of the Lord's mercies 
I recall to my mind, that's why, that's why I, I still got hope. God going to bring me out of there. God's going to bring me through. God is going to deliver. God's going to heal. Come on, because he healed me before. He's going to deliver me. He half delivered. He still delivers. Come on, somebody. Yes, Lord. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I still have hope. Come on, somebody. You know how that some of y'all is in, involved in a, in a battle right now. Glory to And the enemy may be trying to tell you to quit give up, throw in the towel, turn tail to run. Don't run. Recall to your mind. Come on, somebody. Think. Come on, somebody. Bring to your... Yay, Shekay. Bring to your mind a time when God brought you through. This is not the... You see, the devil tries to make... I feel him. I feel the Holy Ghost. The devil tries to make you think, glory to God, that this situation you're in is the worst situation you've ever been in. Come on. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Remember the last time God brought you out? You thought that was the worst thing, but God brought you out. Come on, somebody. And God, get, see, it, my gosh, we're, we're soldiers. Yes, ain't no bullshit. Even like when, even when you're in the military, the United States military, they know that you can't just stay in the battle, 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 because you'll get burnt out. You get what they call battle fatigue. So what they do, they, they, you know, when I was in the Navy, they pull us into a port. Yes, they, it was, they had their uh, reasons for pulling us into a port. They would, amen, bring in more supplies, more armament, things like that there, clean stuff, you know, do all that, get, get more supplies, more food. Come on, uh, are you with me? But at the same time, after, they would release us to go on land. They called it liberty, you know, because they knew to maintain our morale. Come on, somebody. We needed a break. Well, let me tell you something, uh, soldiers. Come on, I'm talking to some soldiers tonight. Amen. Yeah, we might be in the heat of a battle right now. Amen. But God know you're going to get a break. See, we do, we call, in the name, we call it a break, but it's really a breakthrough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Recall to your mind. Get your breakthrough. Recall to your mind and get your hope. All right, I'm back in it. I'm back. I'm back. Let me see what I do. Oh, 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 I got to get the teaching now. Hallelujah. Amen. So Joshua, I mean, excuse me, Caleb stayed single-minded on the word for 45 years. Amen. Now let's go back to Joshua again. I know I went into Lamentations, but I just wanted to make that point. Sometimes you got to recall stuff to your mind. Joshua chapter 14. And then he goes on to say, amen, glory to God. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. Come on. Give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. He recalled to his mind 45 years ago, God gave him a promise. Come on. He, Caleb, his name means dog, but I mean pit bull dog. Come on, somebody. Pit bull locked them jaws on that word and didn't give it up. Amen. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so, the if so be that excuse me, if so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out. As the Lord said, He was single minded on the word. Come on. He believed God was with them. He believed God had given it to him. He but he but he Listen, listen, listen. He believed God when God said, I've given it to you. Go spy the land out. I've given it to you. Come on, somebody. I've given it to you. He believed God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at verse 14. Joshua chapter 14, verse 14. I'm going to read verse 13. May as well be right there. And Joshua blessed him. And gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance. And we've just been uh, teaching uh, uh, before we got into this study of no more limits. We've been teaching, amen, I believe it seemed like six months we were teaching on that we're heirs of God. We have an inheritance. So uh, the Bible tells us that Joshua, who was Moses' successor, who then had the power to divide the land, he gives Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenanite, uh, uh, the Kenazite, excuse me, unto this day, because that he did what? He wholly 
follow the Lord God of Israel. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. He, he hold. So once again, you've got to become, to get your capacity increased, you've got to become single-minded on the word of God. Amen. You can do it. Caleb stayed single-minded on the word of God for 45 years. He never released, he never relinquished faith in what God promised him. A amen, somebody. He never, he never relinquished faith in what God promised. Hallelujah. God has given some of y'all out there some serious promises. Amen. You need to hold on to them. Praise God. It's not over. Amen. That I got that God has promised some of you uh, uh, mothers that, that he was going to save and deliver your children. Come on, somebody. He, he told some of y'all your children was going to be teachers and preachers of the gospel. Amen. They may be running and ripping in the streets. Amen. Nowadays, they doing all kind of stuff. They ain't got no business doing. But you've got to learn how to hold. Mashakanda. Yes. You've got to learn how to hold on. Amen. you got to learn how to hold on to what God said. Amen. And praise him for that word. Come on, somebody. When it seems like your, your, your children is just at their worst, recall to your mind. Let God, allow God to give you a glimmer of hope. Hope. Let him let come on. Let him show you what he's doing. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is a good God. I, I would advise you. I want to, to follow me uh, to Galatians chapter. Amen. Six. Galatians chapter six. Hmm. In verse 9, I'm going to read it first in the King James, and then I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. And let us not be, what? Weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The Amplified Bible reads this way. And let us not lose heart, come on, and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. Come on. For in due time, yes, Lord, and at the appointed season, yes, Lord, we shall reap. Yes, Lord, if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God, it, well, that's self-explanatory. We'll do, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole. Praise the Lord. So we've got to stay single mind. I'm saying it over and over again. Single minded on the word, no, no matter how long it takes. Come on, somebody. No matter how long it takes. Let's go into Proverbs. Go to Proverbs with me. Proverbs chapter four. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope and trust that you all are getting something from this lesson tonight. You've got to stay singly minded on the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, Proverbs chapter four. Mm. Verse 20. Proverbs chapter four, verse 20. You have it, say amen. My son, attend to my words. I know I read this last week, but I want to read it again. <laughs> my son, attend to to my words. Remember uh, when you were, well, <laughs> I come from a fairly large family and uh, oftentimes when my mother and father were not home, they would put uh, the eldest of my siblings in charge. And he would give, you know, you know, tell us what to do and things like that. And uh, sometimes my mother would, would or well, father would come home. Now we've been, we've listened to what my oldest brother said. And we, perhaps we did something that we should not have done. Huh? Or they gave us an assignment that was different than what the assignment the oldest brother gave. And I can still hear my mom or my dad say this. What did I say? 
but what did I say? Why, why would they say, my feel? thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But what did I say? This is a word for somebody. But what did I say? Meaning, I'm the authority. And don't you forget that. I'm the authority. All right? My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Mm -hmm. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. The Amplified Bible reads verse uh, 20 and 21 this way. My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from thy sight, from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. Once again, we must stay single-minded on the word. What did God say? What does his word say? You know, we, we try to say, but, but, but Harold said, what, but what did I say? What did I say? Somebody say, no if, ands, or buts about it. Come on, what did I say? Come on, that's what's important. What did God say? Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 20. I'm going to keep reading. <laughs> keep thine heart with all diligence. Pitbull. Boop. Boop. Keep it. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Of life. Look what it says in verse 24. Put away from thee a froward mouth. In other words, what he's saying is be deliberate about your speaking. Choose your words wisely. Come on. A froward mouth. Froward means saying this one day, saying a total opposite the other day. It, that, that's what the Bible calls uh, uh, a double-minded man. Out of, out of the abundance of the heart, which the Bible really is talking about the mind, the mouth speaks. Put away from the forward mouth. How do I keep my mouth from being forward or back and forth? Is I become single-minded on the word. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Put away from the forward mouth. You know something about your mouth? Your mouth has create creative power. Your words, what you say. Come on. All right? And it says, put away from the forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Here we go, verse 25. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Verse 26. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Look at this. I'm going to read from the Amplified. Verse 25 through 27. Let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose. With fixed purpose. With fixed purpose. What did God say? And let your gaze be straight before you. Mm -hmm. Consider well the path of your feet. And let all your ways be established and ordered aright. Thank you. Thank you. My God. I... Turn not aside to the right hand or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Somebody say, I've got the victory in this situation. Because God delivered me. From the last situation. <laughs> and he'll never fail me. He won't. He won't. 
He won't ever, ever fail. He won't. I'm talking to you. Rain came. Winds blew. But my house is built on you. Come on, somebody. Come on. He won't ever fail you. Receive that now. Hold on. Pitbull. Boom. God promised you something. He's going to do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Turn not aside to the right hand or to the left. Remove your feet from your foot from evil. The New Living Translation of verse 27 reads this way. Don't get sidetracked. Come on. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Mm-hmm. All right? All right, then. Now, so we, we've got to stay single-minded. Single-minded on the word. Totally immerse ourselves in what God said. All right? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 17. All right, we're doing good. Proverbs chapter 17. Verse 24, wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Look here, <laughs> amplified. Let's, I know that's kind of deep to understand, uh, just reading from the King James, but let me get, bring it to you from the amplified, and then you'll see that this also gives you some understanding why I like to use different translations for Bible study. But my standard is the King James Bible. All right. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 24 from the Amplified. A man of understanding sets skillful and godly wisdom before his face but the eyes of a self-confident fool are on the ends of the earth a self-confident fool is always looking at what the world says what the world does what the world says is right that's a self and he begins to take matters in his own hand but a man of understanding gets skillful and sets godly wisdom before his face. In other words, he's single-minded on the word of God. Come on. You know, one of the tragic things that happens in our church or in, in our, in our, in, a, in, not in our church, but in the church or that happens in the life of a lot of believers, our ch young people, they go to college and they come back all twisted up and messed up, you know, and you've got to try, try to unravel all that craziness. You know, another thing that that's a problem that I see individuals get so wrapped up and so zoomed in on. I got to make this money. I got to make this money where well, they don't spend enough time in the word of God because the word of God itself will give them an inheritance. It'll do it. <laughs> Woo! I remember Jesus told Martha, he said, Martha, Martha, you are careful about too many different things. You know, Jesus had come to Martha and Mary's house. Amen. Glory to God. And Mary, she 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 recognized that Jesus said, Hey, I'm gonna sit here before the master and I'm gonna learn something. I'm gonna let him talk to me. And Martha's running around, I gotta straighten this up. I gotta do this here. I gotta do that. She just doing all of this busy stuff. Huh? And, and then here go Martha, Jesus, Lord, tell, tell Mary to help me. Jesus said, uh uh, I'm not gonna tell Mary to help you. He said, Mary has chosen that good part. Come on. Mary has chosen to sit. Huh? Basically, we just say, we to sit at the feet of the master or to sit at the master's table. He said, uh-uh. Mary has chosen that good part. And it says, which shall not be taken away from her. Come on, somebody. That reminds me of what Jesus told Peter. When his name was Simon, he said, yeah, yeah, your name is, your name shall be called Peter. 
He says, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. He says, and I say unto you, he says, Up, un, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What's the it? It shall not prevail against the word I just spoke unto you concerning divine revelation. We should be folk. That's how you get revelation. You zoom in on the word. You hang on to the word and you let God reveal it to you. We got too many young people. I mean, my God. Hallelujah. It, just stressing yourself out, running to and fro. Blue, blue. I got to do this. That's the world's way. I'm, I'm going to tell you. That's the world's way. That's the world's way. Somebody said it this way. You're supposed to get have sweatless victory. When everything's working right, sweatless victory. Sweatless. A man of understanding, according to the Amplified Bible of Proverbs chapter 17, verse 24. A man of understanding, when he understands that seed principle, when he understands, glory to God, uh, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But he, when he understands, his delight should be in the law of the Lord, and in the Lord, in the law of the Lord doth he meditate day and night. Because the word of God says, he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water, which brings forth fruit in his season. It says, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever that man doeth, it shall prosper. Come on, somebody. It shall prosper. It shall prosper. Somebody say it shall prosper. Come on, somebody. It, somebody say it again. It shall prosper. Come on, somebody. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. So we've got to lock in with that pit bull faith. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A man of understanding. Go to one more uh, verse. One more place. Uh, it, well, go to this other place. Let me see what time I got. Okay, I got five minutes. Go to Romans chapter four. Help, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. We got to go to verse 13 to make this make sense. Romans chapter four, verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. In other words, you worked it out yourself because the law worketh wrath for where no law is, there is no transgression. Here we go. You ready? Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope or against what he was seeing in the physical realm, believed in hope. What was the in hope? He saw the words that God has spoken and he believed that, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Amen. So shall thy seed be. Here we go. You ready? And being not weak in faith. Come on, pit bull. Boom. You're going to remember that. Boom. Clench down. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Mm-hmm. He staggered not, okay? He was not double-minded. Come on, somebody. He was not double-minded. He, he put away from him a froward mouth. He was not double-minded. 
and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah, Sarah's womb. He staggered not. He wavered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Give me my mountain, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, who's the he? God. He was able. Who's the he? God was also, he was able also to perform. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus' name. Let's read that from the Amplified Bible. Verse 19 of Romans chapter 4. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter impotence of his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about 100 years old. <laughs> or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's deadened womb, no unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly questioned, concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Verse 21, fully satisfied, fully, totally immersed, single-minded on the word, fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. Come on, somebody. Now, when you study Abraham, I believe it was about 15 years that he had to hold on to the promise of God. Come on. <laughs> Praise God. He had to hold on. Amen. See, Abraham broke through the limitations of, of in the physical realm, his body, Sarah's womb, he broke through the limitations. He increased capacity by staying focused on the word from God. Hallelujah. And as a result, he became strong. His faith capacity increased. He became strong in faith. Amen. So what am I saying? Amen. Glory to God. You got to hang in there. You got to hang in there. You, you got the hang in there. There's one more place we want to go. Here's a verse I want to give you. Go to 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 15. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Here we go. And the spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, hear ye me. I got to put some music on. Come on, music. There we go. He went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. Come on, Bethesda. Hear this. The Lord is with you while you be with him. Come on. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Amen. You, we, listen, listen, listen. The more focused you are on the word, the more your capacity to receive will enlarge. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about totally immersing ourselves in the word, not in nothing else. Not in nothing else. God gave us, gave some people some words this past Sunday. That's one of my spiritual gifts. I have a word of knowledge. 
a word of wisdom, a prophetic word. That's when the anointing come on me. God shows me things and I speak it out. He gave you words. The thing is, were, are you willing to do what he said? Even if you didn't like the word that he gave. Come on, somebody. Amen. You may not have liked the word he gave you. But that word he gave you was for your benefit. On the other side of your obedience to that word, on the other side of you hanging on to that word and doing what that word said, is a blessing. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and honor for the word we received tonight. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your we thank we we robo shake. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the words of utterance that you gave us tonight, Father God. I saw someone in my mind's eye that you targeted tonight. You spoke to them and told them to hold on and hang in there. This thing shall soon soon be over in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, I encourage your people. I pray, I I speak encouragement to them. I encourage them to get into the word. To look at this lesson again and see, hallelujah, the benefits of staying single-minded. That they may look and see, glory to God, what you did for Caleb. That you may see, glory to God, what you did, hallelujah, for Abraham. Father God, that they might see, glory to God, robo shekando boke sakaramanda bahaya. The importance of staying single-minded on the word. In the name that's above every name, the matchless name of Jesus, I bless, I bless, I bless the viewers tonight. In the name of Jesus, I bless, I speak blessings, blessings upon blessings. In the name of Jesus, I speak strength for your fast. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Perhaps you're out there and you've never surrendered your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never made him Lord and Savior over your life. I want to give you the opportunity to do such. It's a very simple process. You've got to believe. Come on. Anything I'm teaching tonight, it will it it's it's useless to you until you become a child of God, until you receive Jesus Christ as your savior. Perhaps that's you. If it's you, I want to repeat this simple prayer after me, after Pastor Sesson. Amen. Say this, Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord. I make him Lord of my life right now I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead I renounce my past life with Satan and close the door to any of his devices I repent I thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. Jesus is my Lord and I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Now all things become new in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, if you've prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the family, the household of faith. I call you brother. I call you sisters in Christ. Thank you. Well, now what you need to do now, you need to get yourself in a church. You need to align yourself up with other believers so that they can strengthen you, help you get strong in the Lord, help you to grow, help you to understand biblical things. You need to get baptized in water. Come on, somebody. You need to get taught. We would love to have you. My name, my name is Pastor Clifford Sesum. Our church is located in the city of Riverside. Amen. In California. It's at 16681 Wood Road. Uh, uh, right down the street from uh, Martin Luther King High School. And that's 92508. Our services are every Sunday. Amen. Glory to God. At 11 a.m. Tomorrow we will be praying. We will have intercessory prayer. At uh, 12 noon, 
Thursday we we receive food to distribute uh, to uh, the needy, and we also to our our parishioners, our congregation. Amen. So we would love to have you. We want to encourage you in your walk of faith. Amen. Well, beloved, that's all Pastor Sesame has for tonight. Glory to Jesus' name. Also, for the brothers watching, we're going to change the date for Saturday. We're not going to do it this coming Saturday. Uh, some things came up, and so it's necessary for us to do it on the following Saturday. I'll remind you about that on Sunday. We're not going to do that work we said we're going to do this Saturday. And I'm going to tell whether you listen tonight, because if you show up on Saturday <laughs> by yourself, I'm going to know you didn't listen. Amen. So we want to say God bless you. And we also want to say congratulations to Sister Ty Holloway and Sister Artisha Turner. They've just, amen, completed their Fresh Start new members class. And so now they are fully fledged members of, of Bethesda Revival Center. And so y'all know how we do it. That's all I have for tonight. Y'all know how we do it. Let's say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord. My strength. And my redeemer. And let the church say. Amen. Beloved. Y'all be careful out there. Once again. It is really hot out there. Also remember. I was listening to the news. Some of the doctors were saying. There's stuff going around. Be safe. God bless you. Be blessed. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.